is is Bromanthane. It is a Russian doping agent that was banned after the 1997 Olympics. To me it is fascinating that a molecule so big and so different from the usual phenylethylamines can have such an effect. And because doping agents are awesome, I am going to try to make my own novel version of this, which has never been made before, and I am going to try it out on myself. I'm just hoping that I'm not generating the next generation of nerve gases, because this would be bad. So here's Trifmontane. It has never been made before, it has never been tried before, and I call it this way because it has this trifluoromethyl group. Don't try this out yourself, because the risks of this compound are unknown, but I'm gonna do it anyways. For the synthesis, I'm only going to need 6 chemicals. I began by weighing out the 2 adamantanone, which is a very interesting looking molecule. I weighed out the trifluoromethyl amyl next, and I had to be quick while doing this, because it's really cold in my lab, and it likes to freeze. The type of reaction I'm doing is called reductive amination and I need a reducing agent. In this case I used 98% formic acid. To heat up the reaction I am using a heating bath filled with triethylene glycol. I prefer to use this over oil because it can easily be cleaned off the glassware using tap water. To keep the vapors from escaping I set up a reflux condenser. I'm going to aim for letting the reaction run for 16 hours. But longer or shorter doesn't really matter. What I found fascinating was that my trifluoromethylaniline formed some crystals. It's likely frozen trifluoromethylaniline and the carbonate salt. I came back to the lab after 5 hours and noticed that there's a bunch of fog in here. Look at that! <laughs> Trifluoromethylaniline glycol isn't toxic, it's also used in fog machines. But I didn't expect this. When I turn off the light and show you with a laser beam, it's even more pronounced. <laughs> Once finished, the contents of the flask looked like this. It wasn't clear anymore and it was even more orange. I turned off heating and stirring and waited for it to cool down before I could do the next step. The reaction that took place is called a reductive amination. In the first step the ketone reacts with the amine to form an imine. The formic acid protonates the imine and the formate anion acts as a hydrogen donor and with carbon dioxide being split off, the imine is reduced to an amine. The specific reaction is called the eschweiler clarke reaction. But you may have noticed that this reaction led to a dialkylated product and I only got a monoalkylated one. Well, as it turns out, the adamantanone is so bulky that the dialkylation is practically impossible. Once the reaction was done, I removed the reflux condenser and switched it out for a short path distillation bridge. While I was running the preparation, I thought that removing the formic acid before doing any other step was a good idea. If I did this again, I would skip this step. I wasn't even able to distill a lot of it off and it left some nasty residue in the condenser that was extremely hard to remove. So with formic acid still present, I then added concentrated hydrochloric acid. The exact amount does not really matter. It could also be done as a two-step process by first heating with sodium hydroxide and then adding hydrochloric acid. There's only one reason why I even need to do this. The formamide of my product is formed from a possible side reaction and I don't want that. But when I heat with sodium hydroxide first and then add hydrochloric acid or heat with hydrochloric acid directly, the formamide is hydrolyzed to the desired product. I heated it for about 8 hours at 90 degrees celsius which led to the solution forming. While it cooled down, it formed a bunch of white crystals. I decanted off the acid solution, filled it back up with distilled water and set up another hot bath. There's a lot of remaining acid left and I also want to wash out all traces of trifluoromethylaniline. I want to try this product and it's not great when there's remaining toxic chemicals in it. To crash out as much of the product as possible, I put it into a beaker containing distilled water. Even the hydrochloride salt of the product is not that soluble and can easily be filtered off without losing that much product remaining dissolved. I rinsed it once with distilled water to absolutely make sure that I got rid of all of the trifluoromethylaniline and then dried it. Once dry it looked like this. Out of curiosity I used a black light on it and even though I didn't expect it to be fluorescent at all it had a beautiful blue fluorescence. To 
determine the yields, I transferred it to a pre-weight plastic container and ended up with 15.3 grams. This is the yields of 46.4%. This is one of the worst preparations that I have ever done. There was some insoluble residue in the condenser and in the flask. And I tried to get rid of it with many methods. I tried to clean it using acetone, using boiling hot sodium hydroxide solution, using a mixture of chromium trioxide and sulfuric acid. I even tried boiling hot piranha solution and refluxing concentrated sulfuric acid. As a last resort, I tried to use hydrofluoric acid, which sounds counterproductive, but yes, it can be used to clean glass. But as nothing worked, I am sure that the chemical reaction itself etched my glassware. I do not understand why, because a fluorine carbon bond is extremely strong, but the only explanation to me is that the trifluoromethyl aniline somehow released fluoride ions. If you have any possible explanation, please let me know down in the comments. So I weighed out some of the products and I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. First I thought it didn't have any taste, it's just sand-like, but the taste that it has is somewhat similar to camphor. I'm gonna wait for an hour and then report back. It's the next day and I can confidently say that this stimulant at least did something. I tried 40 milligrams and unless the placebo effect is messing with me, it's mildly stimulating. But I'm not going to go any further and explore this because as a novel substance, this could have unknown side effects. I don't want to be the first person to experience them. That was that for today's video. Please subscribe so I can have a false sense of accomplishment and have a nice day. Lastly, I would like to thank all of my Patreons because without you guys, I wouldn't even be doing these videos anymore. If you would like to become a Patreon too, please feel free to check the link in the description.